Hello everyone and welcome to Atomshar Weekly and in this video we're going to take a first look at the new navigation API introduced in SIFUI framework. As you can see that I am using Xcode 14 and in order to use the new navigation API the Xcode 14 is required. Now we have already been using navigation view but the navigation view you can see that navigation view is now marked as deprecated and in the new version you will be using the navigation stack or the navigation split view. I'm going to show you how you can use navigation stack. So let's go ahead and build it. Navigation stack. There we go. Now navigation stack allows you to stack different views together. So we're just going to use it kind of like the same way we were using the navigation view. If I want to display something, then let me go ahead and create some sort of a very basic structure that we can utilize. Now let's go ahead and also create an array with hard-coded values for the parks. Now if I want to go ahead and display all of these different values inside the navigation stack, if I go ahead and write this out again, navigation stack, you can see that there are multiple overloads for navigation stack. The first one, which is the one that we were using, takes in the root view. And the other ones includes the binding for the navigation path as well as the mutable collection. We'll take a look at that maybe later, but we're gonna start with the very basic one where in the navigation stack, just like the navigation view, you are providing some sort of a view to perform the navigation. In this case, I just want to go through parks and just want to display the name of the park. Park in, and we can use a text. Over here, we can say park dot name. If we go ahead and refresh our Xcode preview, you can see that it displays all the parks. Just like the navigation view, I can go ahead and also add the title. I can say parks, perfect. Now currently, we cannot really navigate from our list to a park details view. So how can we do that? Well, in order to do that, we will have to use something called a navigation link, which also comes in many different flavors or many different overloads. I'm gonna use the simplest one. Over here, we will pass in the title. What do you want to display? Well, I'm just gonna say the name of the park and the value that you want to pass when you click on this navigation link. Well, we will simply pass in the whole park object, which has to be hashable. If we do that and I click on any of these links, it still doesn't work because we haven't really told the navigation link or the navigation stack as in where are, where is all the stuff going? Like where exactly do you want to go? That is something that we are going to specify using navigation destination. The navigation destination takes in two different arguments. The first one is for which, what type. And we're gonna say park.self, meaning the type will be park. And if you see the park type, then we can go ahead and go to a text view and uh, probably just display the name of the park. So this means that whenever the navigation link whose value is set as park, whenever you are going to perform a navigation link with a value park, the navigation destination which is hooked up to the park type is going to get fired it is going to give you access to the park which we are simply passing to the text view now if i click on any of these things you can see that i am displaying the text which is from this line now, if I don't want to display the text, I actually want to go to the park details view, then we can also do that. Let me show you how we can do that. We have to create a park details view. So let me go ahead and create park details. 
you can see that this park details takes in a park. So in order to go to park details, you must pass a park. So park details. And we already have the park. So we can just go ahead and send it. If I go ahead and refresh it, the output will be kind of like the same because in the park details, we only have one thing over here. I mean, I can go ahead and probably change the navigation to something or I can go ahead and add something over here just to show you that this is a park detail screen. There we go. You can see that it is park detail screen. Now at this point, you might have a question that, okay, that's great. We can actually perform navigation based on the type and we can go to a particular destination. But what about if I am displaying something else also? Maybe I'm displaying a park type and an integer type. Then what happens? Well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and wrap our list in a VStack. So not only we are displaying one list, we will display multiple lists. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and add another list. This will be a list of numbers. Index in. And we will simply try to display the numbers. And there we go. We have a list of numbers. Now currently we are simply using text. And the list of numbers is not really going anywhere. So in order to create a link, we can go ahead and say navigation link. The title will be just the number in a string format. The value itself will be just the number itself, which is the index, which will be one to basically an integer. And now we can go ahead and put another navigation for destination for integer type and the destination, we will get the index or whatever the number you have selected. And we can take that and just show the number. Then we will go to a completely different route. So now if I select the number, I'm going to a completely different view, which in this case is number or text view. But when I am selecting a particular park, then I'm going to a completely different view. Now another kind of navigation can be based on something called a path navigation. For that, let's go ahead and create a new SwiftUI view so we can take a look at that. Path navigation. Okay, so in the path navigation, what we're going to do is we'll still use the navigation, but that will be dependent on a binding structure. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a state variable, which will be called colors. It will be an array of colors and we will initialize it to be an empty array. In the body, we're going to go ahead and create the navigation stack. And what we want to do is we want to perform the navigation whenever an item is added, basically a color is added to the colors array. So colors dot append and we can append a new element in this case which can be a color. Now this can be any color. I'm just adding green, but you can add any color. So what if we want to perform a navigation whenever this colors array is changing? Well, the first thing we need to do is to provide the path navigation as a bindable expression. This means that whenever the colors array is changing, then we can perform a navigation where the type will be the color and the destination in this case can be anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and say the color destination. So this is color view with a background color, which can be simply the color. Now, if we go ahead and run this application, you will see that whenever I add a color, it performs a navigation. And what also is going on is that the colors array is being populated with the color that I'm adding. 
So sometimes you want this kind of a navigation in your application where you add something or remove something and it will perform a navigation based on the navigation destination and based on the path that keeps on changing. Now another kind of navigation you may have seen is called unwinding segways. An unwinding segway navigation is basically when you go from view 1 or view A to view B to view C and from view C you want to go back to the view A without going back to the view B first. So how can we do that? Let's go ahead and add a brand new Civ UI view. And over here, we're gonna go ahead and say probably unwind navigation. Now this is going to be a little bit interesting because we have to do a couple of different things for this to, to work. We have to create a view A that will take us to view B and then that will take us to view C. All right, so we have to go in that particular order. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. We will start with a navigation stack. And in the navigation stack, we are going to create some sort of a link. So I'm gonna go ahead and say navigation link. And we can say go to view B. And whatever the value that you want to send, so let's just call it uh, view B. Currently, you can see that there is no destination, so we can go ahead and add probably a destination over here. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this in a VStack or any other control. And now I can go ahead and add a navigation destination. And for the navigation destination, I'm just gonna say, well, it will be of type string. And the destination, well, we'll get the string value. And the destination that we're trying to go will be different. So it might be that we end up with a different view and that will be view B. Let's go ahead and add the value label that we forgot. Okay, very simple case where we're on view A and actually we can probably write over here that we are on view A. So this is view A that we are on currently. We can even change the font title to the large title. And we're trying to go to view B. If I click on view B, it takes me to view B. Great, so this looks like it is working correctly. Now from view B, what if we wanted to go to view C? Well, the view B currently only contains the text. So maybe we should wrap this out and we should call this something else like a navigation link. But what would this navigation link do? Well, what if we say for string.self or not for string.self, but go to view C. What about the value that we're gonna send? Well, we can say view C, all right? And where would that go? But let's go ahead and see. Hmm. Well, view C, when we click on the view C, it's always firing this navigation destination. What if we add another navigation destination, dot navigation destination, and this will be also for string. We will get the string value, and we will say that that particular thing is actually view C. Now let's go ahead and try it again. View B, now we are on view C. Now, well, it's not really working anymore. You can see that although it kind of was working before, but now it's not. And the reason is that it's kind of confused because now you have two of these going to the same thing. So let's go ahead and change it a little bit, not a big deal. I mean, we can go ahead and change it to integer and set some sort of integer value, let's say 99, int value, and there we go. Let's go ahead and run it again. Currently we are on view A, we will go to view B, and now we can go to view C. Okay, looks like it is working correctly now. Great. 
let's go ahead and change the font size over here also to be large, large title. And we will also change the font size over here to be large title. Let's check out our navigation. View B, go to view C, and we're on view C. Now here's the thing, from view C, how can we go back to view A? Not using the back button, but from a button over here, how can we go back to view A? And that is an interesting question. That's the unwinding navigation, where you will go from view C directly to view A without stopping over at view B. So how can we do that? Well, one of the ways that you can handle this kind of a navigation is by using a path, which is a navigation path. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. All right. We are going to go ahead and create a navigation path. So I'm going to go ahead and create something called a navigation path. State private var path, which is navigation path. And now our navigation stack will use this navigation path. So path, path. Everything is inside the unwind navigation view. If we were using different files for different views, then we would have used the environment object and not the state property. Inside the over here, we can go ahead and probably create some sort of a button. Button, go to view A. Let's see if that button actually appears. Yeah, go to view A. Hmm, but how do we go to view A? We can probably say path dot remove last. Now, what exactly is going on in the path is every single time you click on the navigation link, that particular navigation item is added to the path. So as you are going through the navigation through different views, the path is keeping the history of all the different items that you're going through. So it's kind of like keeping track of your browsing history from navigation from view A to view B to view C in a form of a stack. Now we can go ahead and say remove all of them path dot count. So once we remove all of them, the only one that is remaining is the view A. So view C, view A, oops. Now let's go ahead and start it again. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so we'll start with probably going to view B, now view C, and now back to view A. Pretty cool, right? View B, now view C, and now view A. This is pretty cool. Now, what about if you were using, or currently we're using a state variable because we are currently inside a unwind navigation, one view, but that's not really the case in your real applications. All the views that we are defining over here, which can be this one, which can be all of this, which can be this, all of these will be in different files. So how can we accommodate those cases? In those cases, we can create a separate class and we can call it app state. This will be an observable object and that will have a one property called path, which will be navigation path. So basically we're just moving all the stuff to the navigation path. And I'm also going to go ahead and add a function to it, which will be path.remove last, which we have already done, path.count. And that's it. Now, in order to use the app state, we have to inject it. So if I go over here, we will go ahead and inject it, environment object, and we can say app state. Now, in your actual application, you will probably inject it over here also, which is the root of your application, so app state. 
let's go back. And now, since you have created app state, you can use app state instead of the state because state is a private local state which is only available inside this file or inside this particular view, basically. So now we can get access to the environment object, app state, which is of type app state, and we can use that app state dot path. And whenever we are trying to go to the root, we can simply say app state dot pop to root. And the effect will exactly be the same, but in this way, we, since we're using the environment object, we have the flexibility of creating views into different files. Now I can go to view B, I can go to view C and go to view A. View C and view A. And you can see that unwinding segways are creating this kind of a navigation using the new navigation stack and the path properties is very easy in our new navigation APIs. So there you have it. This is the first look of the new navigation APIs in Swift UI. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We still have to cover some other stuff like navigation, split view, and so on, so which I will cover in the future videos. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a 26 hour course on Surf UI, so I will be updating it to include the navigation API also, so definitely check that one out also. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, let me know how you like this video and if you have any questions. Thank you so much. And the link for the Surf UI course is right there in the YouTube description.